الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد We continue reading in the chapter the author she mentioned حفظه الله تعالى تربية الأولاد تربية الأولاد The chapter with regards to educating and cultivating and raising and raising the children and raising the children. In our previous class we have seen that the children they are a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise a trust and uh, the parents they must show thanks and a great appreciation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to this blessing and uh, likewise they must fulfill the obligation and uh, perform the duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with with regards to this trust and fulfill the rights of that and not betray this affair in any manner whatsoever. And likewise, in our previous class, we have seen that that this requires great knowledge and wisdom with regards to raising the children. And likewise, siyasa. Siyasa is, is proper governing. And likewise, yani, politics. You need to be able to uh, look into the affairs and the situations with regards to the children and the manner to raise them and to deal with them properly. And certain circumstances require uh, different uh, types uh, and different means of cultivation and raising. Sometimes there is a requirement of being gentle and kind and being patient and forbearing and other times maybe there will require some type of harshness and everything must be put in its proper place or else the education and the cultivation could become corrupted, could become corrupted. We have seen likewise the author, she has clarified the great responsibility of this and by mentioning the narration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِهِ That all of you are considered a guardian and you are going to be held accountable. And you are going to be held accountable and responsible and you're going to be asked about those who are under your care about those who are under your care. So the man, he is a ra'i, a rajulu ra'in fi ahri baytihi. And likewise, a mar'a ra'iya fi bayti zawjiha. And in all of them, they're going to be held accountable and they're going to be questioned and they're going to be asked and they're going to be responsible for those under their care. And they're going to be taken to account with regards to those who are under their care and guardianship did they fulfill the right of raising them properly and directing them in the manner that is required or did they fall short in that or did they fall short in that so this is a major affair this is a major affair that someone will be held accountable for in front of in front of their lord about raising their child in the proper manner and the only means to truly be successful in this to truly be successful with this in this life is that a person first, the father and the mother, the husband and the wife, they first must be upright and steadfast and cultivated upon the proper creed and proper belief and proper understanding. And they must be cultivated upon the noble manners and conduct uh, of performing the obligations daily and avoiding and staying away from the prohibitions and abiding by the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam restrictedly and preferring this way and prohibiting their souls from desires and whims and from following the lusts that are impermissible. This is incumbent upon the parents first and foremost to raise themselves upon that way in order to be successful to raise their children. So in the life of a father and a mother or a husband and a wife or even before that, the life and the life of every believer, they must understand and realize the statement of the Prophet wasallam to Mu'ad, رَأْسُ الْأَمْرِ islam Ra'su al Amri al Islam. The head of the affair is that Islam. The most important thing in life is that you establish Islam in your life, in public and in private, in creed and in belief, in actions of worship, in conduct and in deed, and in speech and in contract, in every circumstance and situation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth, he has revealed guidance to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and directing the human being to that which is good in every circumstance in his life. And likewise, turning the human being away from every lowly and foul, wicked and evil situation as well. 
in life. So the one who learns the guidance of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and follows that restrictedly and strives against his soul to establish that diligently, then it is said about him that his life, Ra'su Amri, Ra'su Amri he at Islam. The head of the, the affair in his life is at Islam. But unfortunately, this is deficient in many of the lives of many of the Muslims that we see today, that the head of the affair is not Islam. Rather, the head of the affair is uh, something else besides that. And because of that, you find that the first thing that will be violated will be the rights of Islam, will be the precepts of Islam, will be the teachings of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If this ever conflicts with something from the, uh, the, the worldly life, which is the head of the affair and the heart of some of the believers, then the first thing they will compromise is their religion and their deen. What do you have This is failure. And then on top of that, whenever they have children and they raise their children upon that same same ideology and methodology and preference of the worldly life over the establishment of the religion and uh, seeking the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, then their children as well will be uh, following them in that and cultivated upon that and the head of the affair will not be Islam not in the life of the parents and not in the life of the children and not in, in the life of their household rather the dunya and uh, the position and the rank and the status and the degrees and the diplomas and the different careers and occupations and the houses and the cars and whatever else from the glitter of this worldly life, this will be the head of the affair. And before any of that goes, uh, at Islam, we will go first. And this is whenever the hearts are corrupted, what and uh, therefore it's incumbent again for us to cultivate ourselves upon the love of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam first and foremost and to prefer that and to strive against our souls to prefer that and then to abide by that and then after that to hope to have children that will be a means of benefit for the ummah and guidance for the ummah children that will be upright and pious and that will be righteous and noble and that will be upon the way of the pious and the righteous predecessors not just children who are living life eating and drinking like animals and getting married and having children and living and dying and then that's it rather there's much more to life than that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has clarified that this life is very, is very brief. That this life is very brief and compared to the hereafter it's nothing. And compared to the hereafter it's nothing. And uh, he mentions sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a method of dunya fil akhirah, ka method ahadikum yadda isba'ahu hadihi firyam, firyam dhur bima tarja. That the parable and the example of this life compared to the hereafter is that of one of you putting his finger into the ocean and then taking it out and let him see what he brings back and let him see what he brings back this has been reported authentically on the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the hadith of mustawrid in sahih muslim let him look at what he brings back if a person were to put his finger in the ocean and then take it out the amount of water that remains on his finger compared to that which is in the ocean is nothing and this is the example of this life compared to the hereafter this life compared to the hereafter is the example of that water that remains on somebody's finger whenever they dip it in the sea. Whenever they dip it in the sea, it's almost no comparison whatsoever. And that which remains, that which remains is the true life. And it will either be eternal happiness and bliss and joy and felicity or it will be eternal pain and grief and agony and torture. What do you have to so this life is a test and it's very, very brief. Then if we ponder a bit further, my noble sisters, may Allah bless you and increase you in good on this noble example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That water that one brings out on his finger that's very little compared to that which is left, even it will not remain on the finger but for a brief moment because it will evaporate and go away. So that which comes out of the sea by placing one's finger in there is almost nothing. And then that portion, that is almost nothing. It almost does not remain but a very brief moment. A very brief moment and then it's gone. And then it's gone. And that's the example of, of this life. This life is a brief moment for us. This life is a brief moment for us and then it will be gone and then we will move on to the next stage in the barzakh, waiting the resurrection. And whenever death occurs, the resurrection begins for a person and he enters now into the hereafter, the realm of recompense. 
the realm of recompense, where one will he will be held accountable, and accountability he will start in the grave. A person he will be recompensed in the grave for his good deeds, and he will taste delight and sweetness even in his grave before the hereafter. And likewise, as well, those who are wicked and disobedient and neglected their trust and did not fulfill their rights, and they were not thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal, they will have punishment in their grave before the hereafter. They have punishment in their grave before the hereafter. It's been mentioned that the one who is in the delight of the grave, the delight that he finds in the hereafter compared to that of the grave will make the delight in the grave seem like it was torture or punishment. And likewise, the punishment of the grave compared to the punishment after that, after the day of resurrection, will make the punishment in the grave seem like it was pleasure and delight because it's more severe. Because it's more severe. So this is something that the parents have to realize and the Muslims in general that we have souls and that this life is a test and that this life is brief and then we will be held accountable from those things that we will be held accountable for for our, our own souls and likewise those souls under our guardianship and authority and if the head of the affair is not Islam in our life then we will never be able to fulfill those rights and perform that duty properly rather we will be deficient and, and that is a must rather we'll be deficient and that is a must until we realize in our life and we're truthful with ourselves and with Allah Azza wa Jalla we make Al Islam the head of the affair and we show preference to that over everything else in life establishing that which is pleasing to Allah establishing that which is according to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and upon the manhaj of the Salaf is Saudi and not just talking about it and not just claiming it and not just ascribing to it falsely without having any reality in action and statement and, and indeed rather as we know actions speak louder than words so we continue reading as she says حفظها الله تعالى ولا بد من تعاون الأبوين في تربية أولادهما ولا بد من تعاون الأبوين في تربية أولادهما ولو أحمل أحد منهما ما عليه من المسؤولية لبقي جانبه فيه نقص إلا ما شاء الله so here she says now that it's incumbent for both of the parents, the mother and the father, to cooperate together. To, to cooperate together upon raising the children. This, no doubt, is a very important point to recognize and realize and pay attention to. That it is incumbent for both of the parents to cooperate together in raising the children. And if one of them were to be negligent with regards to his duty or her duty, then there will be defic deficiency in that. There will be de great deficiency in that except for whatever Allah wills. إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى So therefore it's incumbent that the mother and the father that they realize that the head of the affair is at Islam and they want to have a family and a household that is upon the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and they want to work together to reach the pleasure of Allah to go to Jannah and anything that will be a means to lead them and their family to the paradise they will strive to learn that and be upon that and apply that and abide by that and anything that is contrary to that then they will work together to leave that and avoid that and turn away from that and stop that and prohibit that and prohibit that and this is something that's incumbent that this ideology and this this precept and this creed and this belief it must be firmly rooted in the heart of the parents first and foremost of the husband and the wife of the mother and the father that what is most important to them is that whenever they die that Allah is pleased with them and the head of the affairs is at Islam and establishing the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if one of them is deficient in that then it's going to bring great deficiency to to the family and in turn being be, be, be great deficiency with regards to raising the children with regards to raising the children we find today and actually in reality for generations that much of the corruption of the children and, and the problems that we find with the youth is stemming from the foul direction and the bad advice and the whims and the desires and the contradictions that the parents are upon. The contradictions to the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the parents are upon even if they claim to be Salafi. Maybe they're Salafi, some of them, maybe they really are, but they have contradictions and conflictions and they desire something other than the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jalla and they show preference to that and likewise they raise their child upon that way and it means to corrupt them as well and this is a problem and this is a problem and this is the point uh, of this introduction in this chapter to remind us that we're going to be held accountable for that 
So a person, he'll be punished for his own desires. And then likewise, if he misled and misdirected his children, he'll be punished for that likewise. He'll be held accountable for his own desires and own whims and his own mistakes and own errors and following his own desires. And likewise, if he misled his children and did not raise them properly, he'll be held accountable for that likewise. So this is something that's very serious. So the people of knowledge, they mention about the family and the household, that this is a great and very uh, important part of, of the society. The the family, the family and the household is a great foundation and fundamental in the society. And that Islam has shown great care and concern with the family. And the first household and the first family was the household of Adam and his wife Hawa alayhimu salatu wassalam and this is the first family and from them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his power and his ability to do all things he has created many families, many families after them. And the family, the people of knowledge have mentioned, is like a ship sailing through the ocean of life. The family and the household is like a ship sailing for the, through the ocean of life. And life is like an ocean or a sea. And there's many ups and downs. And if a person, he's not careful, he can lose course. Or he can get off track. Or he can be misled. Or he can go into, into some very dangerous and difficulty uh, waters, or even he can uh, be a means that some of the people aboard his ship will fall over and drown, or even he could be a reason for his ship to drown entirely. So to think about this comparison, then in our own families individually, are we selling on the straight path? Are we selling on the straight path? Are we doing whatever we can to stay in the safe path and selling straight through life and the ups and downs of life and the trials and tribulation and, and the tests of life and the ocean and the, and the great waves and trials and strong winds of shubuhat and doubts and misconception in the religion and likewise of shahawat and whims and impermissible lusts and impermissible lusts? Are, are we selling our family straight? Are we doing our best to keep our ship afloat or are we drowning or even have we drowned or been a, re a reason to drown some of our family members or those who are riding along with us in our ship? Because the father, he is the captain and likewise along with him is the, is the, is the mother and they have to cooperate together in order to keep their ship sailing straight upon the straight path, upon piety and righteousness, upon obedience to Allah and His Messenger. And if one of them fails in that, then, then it's very easy for them to lose course. And it's very easy for them to start sailing in the wrong direction and to go away. And many times they will not realize that until it's too late, until they have drowned, or until they have, they, they have lost some of uh, those riding aboard their ship and the likes like this, meaning from their children and the likes. From their children and the likes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He threatened. He threatened the likes of this in, the, in His book. Alam tara ila ladina baddalu ni'mat Allahi kufran wa hallu qawmahum darul bawar jahannama yaslawnaha wa bi'sa al qarar. Do you not see those people who have, who have traded the blessing of Allah? Alam tara ila ladina baddalu. Baddalu ni'mat Allahi. Do you not see those people who exchanged the blessing of Allah? Kufran. Do you not see those people who have exchanged the blessing of Allah? They have traded that, the favor of Islam. And the guidance of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam trading that for kufr, for disbelief, for being ungrateful, for showing preference to whims and desires and to the glitter of this worldly life and showing preference to having a job or an occupation or some type of degree or the likes like this over the commandments of Allah and, st and holding steadfast to his obedience. أَلَمْ تَرَى إِلَى الَّذِينَ بَدَّلُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ كُفْرًا And what did they do after that? وَأَحَلُوا قَوْمَهُمْ دَارُوا بَوَارُ and they had caused their own people to fall into the home and the abode of destruction and pain and torment, into the hellfire. Jahannama yaslawnaha wa bi'sal qarar. The hellfire. They caused their own people to fall into the hellfire. And that is called, that is called Jahannama. And it is the worst and the most evil of all destination. This is what happens whenever a person, he trades the blessing of Islam. He trades and exchanges that and shows preference to the worldly life over the commandments of Allah and over the guidance of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will go astray and be a means to land his people likewise in the hellfire. In the hellfire. This is something that's very dangerous. This is something that's very serious. So we should take ourselves to account and we should look at our, our family and our navigation of our family. Are we navigating our ship? 
properly? Are we negligent in that? Do we even have control of our ship or does somebody else have control of the ship? And no doubt with regards to the family, the man, he's the head of the household and not the woman. And this is something likewise that is a great, great problem in many families that we see today that the woman, she thinks that she's the head of the ship and she thinks that she's leading the, leading the family and that she's the one who has the order and the command and she's the one and she's the one and she's the one and this is all falsehood and misguidance and contrary to what Allah has revealed. And this is a clear sign that in her life, the head of the affair is not Islam. Because if the head of the affair was, was Islam, it would be very clear to see that Allah, He says, that the man, they are caretakers of, of the woman. That men, they are guardians of the women, and they are caretakers of the women, and the man is not like the woman. The male is not like the female. So again here she's saying that these parents, they must cooperate together in raising the children. This requires for both of them to know who they are. The man, he must realize he's a man and he's a father and he's the head of the household. And he must stand up with manhood and take care of that property and fulfill those rights. And abide by the commandments of Allah Azza wa Jal and the sunnah of his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and avoid the prohibitions. And likewise the woman as well, she must realize that she's a woman and a mother and not a husband and not a father. And she's not driving the ship, rather she's cooperating with the captain. Cooperating with the captain, co cooperating with the husband, they have to cooperate together and both of them have rights from each other and under them there are rights that the children have upon them. Their rights that the children have upon them is so important to learn the religion properly and to be sincere and truthful in that and to turn away from following the desires because if not we could lead ourselves and our families to destruction because we could lead ourselves and our families to destruction. So with regards to the mother and the father, then they have to make their goal the pleasure of Allah. And they have to be truthful in that. And they have to observe and remember this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He can see them and hear them, and He will take them to account, and they will return to Allah and be held accountable. And likewise, their children as well. And entering paradise is not by false dreams and false hopes. لَيْسَ بِأَمَانِيِّكُمْ وَلَا أَمَانِيِّ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ it's not by your false hopes and your false desires and the false desires of, of the people of the book. Man يعمل سوءا يجزى به And whoever works evil, he will be held accountable for that. And whoever works evil, he will be held accountable for that. So to enter paradise, we have to believe properly and work with that belief and work upon that belief and remain and abide by the requirements of that belief and fulfilling the rights of that faith until we die. And likewise, if we want our children to be with us as well, we have to order them to do that and teach them how to do that and help them upon that way and avoid anything that would turn us away from that path. Because there is a path that leads to paradise and there are many paths that lead away from paradise. And Allah he says, وَإِنَّ هَذَا سِرَاطِي مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا سُبُلًا فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِ And this is my straight path, therefore follow it. And do not follow the other paths that will turn you away from my path. The other paths of one, uh, the dream to have a career, and the dream to have a job, and the dream to have a big house, and the dream to have uh, a, a big car. Having these things... Uh, are not necessarily 100% impermissible but many times because of ignorance and because of the, the overcoming uh, of the desires then uh, they will lead a person they will lead a person to, to disobey Allah and he will not be able to have a degree except by selling his religion or a portion of his deen or except by trading her religion or compromising in her deen so this is something to be to take serious. If you if, if you if you want to get a career, sister, but in order to get that career, you have to compromise your religion. Then think about that because it's only your soul that you will be disgracing, and it's only your soul that you're going to put in jeopardy. And uh, we will not have false hopes or false understanding and say, "Oh Allah, He is the most forgiving, and He is the most merciful," because He is the most forgiving and the most merciful for those who take a path. But as for, for those who neglect his commandments and do not show concern for his his religion and his rights, that he's severe in punishment. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, we have to look at this affair. We have to look at this affair. Some sisters, they say, well, I want to have an education. I want to have an occupation. I want to have this and I want to have that. If it, in order to get this goal and to reach this goal is going to require you to disobey Allah Azza wa Jal, then you should think twice. You should think twice. And if you choose to continue, you are selling your religion and turning away from your deen and compromising the pleasure of Allah and the paradise for this miserly thing that you hope that you will gain and you will get. 
for this miserable thing that you hope that you will gain and you will get, and in the end you will die, and that will go away. As for that is with a, that 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 which is with Allah is going to remain. It's going to remain. So if you want to have an occupation, make sure that it's in accordance with the, that which is pleasing to Allah. And it will not cause you to compromise or to back down from your religion, to sacrifice your deen, or to violate the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal, or to oppose the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you can have a, a job in this manner, then marhaban biki. Marhaban biki. If you can have a, a, an occupation in this manner, then marhaban biki. And if not, then turn away from that and, and prefer. And prefer the pleasure of Allah over your desires. And prefer the pleasure of Allah over over your desires. As for the one as for the one who will feared standing before Allah and prohibited his self from his desires, then this is the one that went to the paradise. As for the one who neglected the commandments of Allah and violated those rights all in preference to some worldly benefit or gain, then this person, waliyadu billah, is exposed is exposed to a great threat. Is exposed to a great threat. And we repeat these affairs because now we see the terrible and the foul result of not taking this seriously. And that is in the raising of the children. And that's the chapter that we're talking about. So before we can talk about truly, truly we're going to be somebody who's raising our children, then we have to raise ourselves. We have to raise ourselves. We have to cultivate ourselves. We have to learn to obey Allah and prefer His obedience. We have to learn how to follow the Prophet and prefer His way. And to leave off the ways of our people or the ways that, that, that we desire and that which we want. Well, I want to be this and I want to be that. This is called desires. What you want, what I want, these are desires. We have to make sure that what we want is in accordance to what is pleasing to Allah. And whatever that we want that is not according to the pleasure of Allah, then it's in coming for us to leave that to leave that and turn away from that and to change that and to want something else and to look to what Allah is pleased with and to start to want that and start to desire that and to hope to have that and show preference to that at this time then it's hoped that these people they'll be given success to raise a family that is selling on the straight path that is selling on the straight path so this is something again that's very important and if we look at the steps that she mentions now with regards to the very first stages of raising our children, we will see that she understands clearly. And this is a favor from Allah upon her. We hope that Allah will bless us likewise, that we can see clearly that the head of the affair is at Islam. The head of the affair is at Islam. Ra'su al-Amri at Islam. Ra'su al-Amri at Islam. Three words. I hope that all of you noble sisters memorized them. This narration is from the, a long narration. And it turned from the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabir radiallahu anhu. In that narration, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, Ra'su al-Amri al-Islam. Ra'su al-Amri al-Islam. The head of the affair is al-Islam. The most important thing in life is establishing al-Islam. The head of the affair. And he, meaning that anything can go, not the head. Because if the head goes, that means that the, the body's finished and there's no life. There's no life. If the head goes, then that means the, 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 the life of the person is over. A person, if he's hit in his arm or in his finger or in his pinky or in his stomach or in his leg or in his knee, no doubt, no doubt this will hurt him. But so long as his head is intact, he's alive. He's alive. Even if somebody lost a hand or lost an arm or lost a leg, but he did not lose his head, he's alive. He's alive, but if the head goes, then the whole body goes. This is the example the Prophet وسلم, is making about the true life. The head of the affair is at Islam. If Islam goes, then everything goes. Do not be deceived. Don't be like, oh, if I can't get a job and I can't have a career, my life is over. La, so long as you have Islam, your life is alive and you're upon khair and goodness. If that goes, now you have lost. Now you have lost. So this is understood here in these points that we read now. So she says, وَيُعَلَّمُ الْتِفْلُ حَسَبَ مَرْتَبَتِهِ وَفَهْمِهِ وَيُعَلَّمُ الْتِفْلُ حَسَبَ مَرْتَبَتِهِ وَفَهْمِهِ And the, the, the child, he should be taught, he should be educated according to his level and according to his understanding. So not every child has it on the same level and understanding. So everyone is according to his level and understanding. But what is taught to that child is that the most important thing in his life and what he was created for and the reason why he's breathing is to establish the rights of Allah. 
is to obey Allah and to establish it tawheed. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And the reality of our ibadah and establishing the tawheed is to obey Allah Azza wa Jal. Is to obey Him and to comply to Him and to submit to Him and to surrender to Him in obedience and incline, in compliance by fulfilling the obligations and avoiding the prohibitions. This is the reality of that. And the child it must be taught and educated and cultivated according to its level and understanding. Now she says, وَإِلَيْكِ شَيْءً مِنْ ذَلِكَ And here is something with regards to that. You need some detailed and examples of that and some points and steps that you can take, my noble sister. So she says, فَمَثَلًا فِي الْمَرْحَلَةِ الْأُولَى So for example, in the very first stages of teaching. The very, for example, in the very first stages of, uh, of cultivation. Number one, يُلَقَّنُوا الطِّفْلُ اللَّهَ يُلَقَّنُوا الطِّفْلُ اللَّهَ مَا لِشَارَةِ بِالْإِسْبَعِ لِلْسَّمَاءِ The very first stage, the, the, the child, the, before he can say a word, before the child can say a word, the, what do you do to him? What do you do for him? You teach it how to say Allah. You teach it how to say Allah. You teach it how to say Allah. The very first, she's saying here, يُلَقَّنُوا الطِّفْلُ Allah ma'al isharati bil isba'i ila sama along with pointing the finger to the heavens this is what you do the very first thing she's saying in the very first stages before the child can even say a word before he can even say a word the first thing that you teach it to say is the name Allah along with pointing the finger to the heavens along with pointing the finger to the heavens you plant the seed of tawhid in the child's heart from the very first day before it can even speak That's because the head of the affair is at Islam. The head of the affair is at Islam. The head of the affair is at Islam. The first thing you teach the child is not, the, not, not its name. Not the name of the child. What is the first thing? What is the first thing that Isa ibn Maryam, he said whenever he was born? What did he say? Alayhi salatu wa salam qala, Inni abadullahi atani al-kitab wa ja'alani nabiyya. And he, this is what he said. The first thing, whenever he was a child, he was he was allowed to speak. And whenever they were they were accusing his mother of fornication, accusing his mother of fornication, he 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 spoke, but he did not free her of fornication. He did not free her of the blame of fornication. Rather, he freed his lord of the blame of having a son. قال إني عبد الله أتاني الكتاب وجعلني نبيا وجعلني مباركا أينما كنت وأوصاني بالصلاة والزكاة ما دمت حيا الله أكبر the first thing he said is this I'm the slave of Allah so likewise the child the first thing that it is taught is is the name of its creator and who its creator is and where he's at and where he's at he's above the heavens he's above the heavens in the manner befitting his majesty and he he has a name his name is Allah His name is Allah. So the child, he's taught like this. The first thing he will be taught to say, you teach it how to say Allah. She says, يُلَقَّن يُلَقَّن الطفل Allah. يُلَقَّن is from, is, is from التلقين. التلقين, I need to make it easy to understand. My noble sister, is this is like when you say, repeat after me. Repeat after me, this is called تلقين. أُلَقِّنُكَ الْفَاتِحَةِ You tell your, for, for example, and then you repeat after me. To make تلقين for the Fatiha, somebody who can't read, you say it to them, and then they repeat it back to you. You say it to them, and then they repeat it back to you. So like this, you're going to teach the child over and over, and you're going to say the name Allah, and you point to the heavens until the child is able to say Allah, and point to the heavens, and point to the heavens. And then she says number two, إِذَا فَيْتِهِ طَعَامًا إما كسرة خبز أو نحوها تناوليه في يده اليمنى تناوليه في يده اليمنى that whenever you give the child some food for example a piece of bread or other than that you hand it to him in his right hand you hand it to him in his right hand and this is the sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم so look at this tartib here the head of the affair is that Islam what is that Islam? أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله I bear witness that there's nothing worthy of worship except for Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم so the first thing that you teach him is how? to say Allah the one who the name of the one who created him and brought him to existence and is providing for him this is the first thing and then whenever you cultivate him and you raise him you raise him upon the way of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, the one who ordered us to take things in their right hand 
and not in their left hand, and to eat with their right hand, and not with their left hand. And it's been narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لِيَأْكُلْ أَحَدُكُمْ بِيَمِينِهِ وَلْيَشْرَ بِيَمِينِهِ وَلْيَأْخُذْ بِيَمِينِهِ وَلْيُعْطِي بِيَمِينِهِ That one of you, he must eat with his right hand, and he must drink with his right hand, and he must take things from others with his right hand, and he must give likewise to others with his right hand. فَإِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ يَأْكُرُ بِشِمَارِهِ وَيَشْرَبُ بِشِمَارِهِ وَيُعْطِي بِشِمَارِهِ وَيَأْخُذُ بِشِمَارِهِ Because indeed, a shaytan, he eats with his left hand and he drinks with his left hand. وَيُعْطِي بِشِمَارِهِ And he gives with his left hand and he takes with his left hand. And he takes with his left hand. This is narrated by Ibn Majah. This is narrated by Ibn Majah. So therefore, this is from the first stages. The child, he's not held accountable. The child is not held accountable, but you are my noble sister. You are my noble, my, my, my noble brother, the, the mother and the father, those who are required to cultivate the child. You are held accountable. You are held accountable. From the things you're held accountable with regards to is to teach him who Allah is, to teach him who his creator is, and then to teach him the rights of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the obligations that Allah has placed upon him, and to teach him likewise the prohibitions that Allah has made forbidden for him to, to be involved in and to help him upon that. And likewise to teach him about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the guidance of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to cultivate him upon that. And from that is when you give him something, some food, for example, you put it in his right hand. If he tries to take with his left hand, you gently put the left hand down and you put it in the right hand. You don't get mad or angry and slap him and be harsh and rude and la. You just change hands. You say barakallah fi yamin yamin. Right hand, right hand. If he tries to put the left hand, you just move the left hand down and you put it in the right hand until he has it in his right hand. And then after that, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So this is the case. It starts from the very beginning. She's telling us now the first thing that you do is make sure and do your best that the first thing your child ever says is the name of Allah. And that your child has an understanding from the very beginning. It's ingrained in his heart that Allah is above the heavens in a manner befitting his, his majesty. In a manner befitting his majesty. And likewise, you cultivate him and raise him upon the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from that, giving him the, his food and the items in his right hand. In his right hand. She says, number three. And if the food is hot, if the food is hot, then you must not, my noble sister, blow in the food to cool it off. And maybe the food is hot that she's going to prepare for the child. So you must not blow in the food to cool it off, my noble sister. She says, because indeed the Prophet وسلم, prohibited blowing on the vessels. Prohibited blowing on the vessels. So this is something the Prophet وسلم, prohibited. So therefore you will not do it, especially not for your child, because if your child sees you doing that, they will learn that from you. And this is something that the Prophet وسلم, has forbidden, just as has been mentioned and collected in the Sahihain from the Hadith of Abi Qatadata radiallahu anhu. And in this narration it's uh, mentioned that the Prophet وسلم, he said, وَإِذَا شَارِبَ أَحَدُكُمْ that if one of you were to drink, then let him not breathe, breathe or blow into the, into the container, into the vessel, into the vessel. So one will not blow on the food and the likes like this. This is something that's contrary to the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And now she mentions the beautiful point. She says, وَلَوْ رَأَى الطِّفْلُ مَنْ مَنْ يَفْعَلُ ذَلِكَ وَلَوْ رَأَى الطِّفْلُ مَنْ يَفْعَلُ ذَلِكَ لَوَجَدْتِهِ Surana ma yutabbiku dhalika. And if the child he sees he sees someone doing that, then it will not be long. Meaning, then very quickly he will start to apply that, or he will start to practice that. Meaning, from the fastest ways that the children they learn is from learning from the environment around them and what people do around them. And what people do around them, and we have seen this likewise in those previous chapters with regards to lying. That even if a, a mother or a father or someone was to pretend they had some food or something, some candy, for example, in their hand, 
And uh, they called their child in this manner, and whenever they came, there was nothing for them to give them. And the parent or the guardian is pretending they have something in the hand to give them if they come to them. And when if they come to them, you don't give them anything, then this is considered a kithba, and this is considered lying. And this was mentioned previously also to clarify that this is a means of teaching the child to lie. That the child would learn lying in this manner. So likewise, if the parents they 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 they, they uh, perform actions that are violations of the Sunnah or in contradiction to the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or uh, things that are not pleasing to Allah, the children they learn that from them. The children they learn that from them. Any at a very, at a very young age, at a very young age. He says, وَهَكَذَا جَمِيعُ الْأَشْيَاءِ وَهَذَا كُلُّهُ مِسْدَاقٌ لِقَوْلِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ مَا مِنْ مَوْلُودٍ إِلَّا يُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ فَأَبَوَاهُ يُهَوِّدَانِهِ أَوْ يُنَصِّرَانِهِ أَوْ يُمَجِسَانِهِ And like this, the rest of the affairs, any, as well. And this here also is a testimony to the authenticity of or the correctness of the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whenever he said Ma min mawludin illa yuradu al fitra that there is no child except that it is born upon al fitra. And what is intended by al fitra al Islam. Yani al Islam meaning there's they're born upon the natural disposition to believe in the correct belief and that there's nothing worthy of worship except for Allah. That there's nothing worthy of worship except for Allah. This is naturally created in the human being like this. And this is how every child is born. And then it is his parents. It is the parents that turn it into a Jew. Or turn it into a Christian. Or turn it into a Majus. It is the parents that corrupt the child. Because the child is born in a state of purity, in a state of the fitrah, the natural, in the natural disposition to accept the truth and to believe in the truth and to follow it, and to follow it. So it's the parents, they're the ones who change that. They're the ones who change that. Either they're going to change that directly by their actions that they do, but even, even worse than that, what we see in these days is that the parents, they change that by taking their child and putting it in the, hand, in the hands of the Jew and in the hands of the Christian in the hands of the Majus in the hands of the atheists in the hands of those people who don't even know what gender they are what do you have to and then they're supposed to raise them and, and, and teach them how to live life and direct them and guide them and their direction and guidance leads to nothing except for the anger of Allah and agony and torture and pain in the hereafter what do you have to what the other belong? So it's incumbent for the parent to raise the child, and then to raise the child upon the the fitra of Al Islam, fitra Allah, alati fatra nas alaiha, la tabadila li khakillah. So this is something that's very important, and a benefit here the people of knowledge mention that a person who is truthful and sincere and has knowledge and insight to the creed and the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal, to the proper creed and the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. They have knowledge and insight with regards to this affair and they're truthful and striving to raise their children upon that way. It will not be difficult for them. Yani it will not, it, 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 it's not hard to convince the child that there's nothing worthy of worship except for Allah because it's already ingrained in the child's heart. It's not hard to convince the child that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because it's already ingrained in the child's heart. It's not hard to convince the child that Adam, he's the first man that Allah created and from him he created his, his wife and from them many, many human beings and mankind. It's not hard to convince the child that there are angels and that, that, and that they have different functions and that there are many prophets and messengers, and that Allah He revealed revelation, and that there is a day of judgment and a day of accountability. These affairs here, this proper and upright creed of Al Islam, for a child that has never been introduced to anything else, it will not be hard to cultivate them upon that because it's already ingrained in them and created in them. It's already ingrained in them and created in them. So a person is not introducing or putting something foreign or new into the heart or the soul of the child, rather, they are just cultivating that which is already there, and that is Al Islam. Kullu mawludin yuladu ala al fitra, ala al fitra, fitra Allah that he fatra nas alayha, ay alimanu billahi azza wa jal, wal yom al akhir, wal tawheed, yani the natural disposition of believing in Allah, and believing in the, in the greatness and the majesty of the Creator, and likewise in the meeting of the hereafter, and the resurrection, believing in the oneness of Allah, and that there's nothing worthy of worship except for Him. So this is something, again, that is of utmost importance. She says, وَالشَّاعِرُ يَقُولُ وَيَنْشَأُ نَاشِئُ الْفِتْيَانِ فِينَا عَلَى مَا كَانَ عَوَّدَهُ أَبُوهُ And uh, the young men or the young children, they uh, are raised and they grow up uh, upon that which their parents had accustomed them to. 
that whatever the parents uh, cultivate them and raise them upon and uh, had uh, made them accustomed to, then this is what they will grow up upon. وَمَنْ شَابَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ وَمَنْ شَابَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ شَابَ عَلَيْهِ The people of knowledge they say, وَمَنْ شَابَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ شَابَ عَلَيْهِ And the person who was raised and cultivated upon something, he will grow old upon that thing. He'll, be a, he'll, he'll grow old upon that way. And he, so this is uh, very important to cultivate the children from the very beginning upon the creed of a tawheed upon the creed of a tawheed and upon the shahada and la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, it starts from the very beginning in this manner like this may Allah grant a success and now the points they continue one after another but my noble sister you must realize the reality of this life and uh, the reality of our souls and the accountability in the hereafter and that the winners there are those who are truthful in their faith and they're sincere in their iman and they love Allah Azza wa Jal and prefer his obedience and they prefer the hereafter over this life and they love the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more than they love their own souls more than they love their mothers and their fathers more than they love their children and the one who lives like this then he will not sacrifice his soul for the worldly life and he will not sacrifice likewise in turn his children for the worldly life rather if you are truthful and if you're sincere and you work hard to obey Allah Azza wa Jal and raise your family properly then many times Allah Azza wa Jal he will also open up the worldly life for you he will also open up the worldly life for you he's the most generous and kind and, and nothing is hard for him but we uh, have to overcome these obstacles and some of them are just simply in our minds and they're not even real they're doubts and illusions that the society has placed or whispers and whims that the devils ha- have presented and some of us have fallen victim to that so to put your faith and trust in Allah Azza wa Jal and to be truthful with him and to strive to seek his pleasure and to take the means to do that and to raise the child, to raise the child, to, to raise the child, to make effort and to strive and to struggle and to go through hardship to make sure your child is safe from disbelief and safe from misguidance, is safe from deviation, is safe from misconceptions and misunderstandings, is safe from desires and whims to make your best effort and that you raise the child upon the fitrah and that their souls are not corrupted and uh, these foreign ideologies are not introduced to them and again many of us these ideologies have been introduced to us and we have not yet removed them from our own souls and because of that uh, the raising of our children has become very deficient may Allah rectify our affairs and cover our faults and help us and aid us and pardon us and uh, cover our shortcomings هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم